Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to share with you guys a couple of tools that I use often as a UX designer in my everyday job. This is not a paid promotion. These are just sharing some of the tools I use often. I wanted to share this with you guys. If you have tried it and I would love to know your thoughts. And if there are other tools you'd like to recommend, please feel free to also suggest it and leave in the comments. And just a quick reminder, um, I share everything about UX from interviewing tips to uh, design critics on my YouTube channel. If you are interested, please feel free to hit the subscribe so you won't miss any of my future content. Okay, let's do it. So the first one, no doubt, uh, the most frequent tool I use in my everyday job as a UX designer is Figma. I used to use Sketch uh, in my past job and uh, recently transitioned to Figma in the last year. Figma is a tool, you know, I think for a lot of designers working UX, I'm sure you're familiar with, but if you are new to UX and trying to pick up, okay, what is the number one software uh, you should learn? Uh, I would definitely recommend Figma. So uh, it's basically allow you to do things from low fidelity wireframes to hi-fi, high pol polished screens to creating prototypes. Every and especially, it's a, a, one thing I love about F Figma is really the live collaborations. So basically. Um, if you are working with multiple team members, you will be able to like invite others and work brainstorm together live um, in Figma. And also because it actually run on cloud and it has like supported desktop version, but you can easily like share a web link with others for someone who doesn't really have the software. Uh, as long as you share the link, um, they will be able to see it as a viewer. So it is uh, extremely good for like collaborations and sharing. Uh, file sharing and when it comes to working the actual creation like um, of design works it's actually very similar to sketch in my opinion uh, so um, in terms of working putting together like create a component um, and creating things from like smaller level tags uh, button or bigger cars or cars and screens uh, it has different like template from different device shapes and um, you will be able to find also a lot of resource from the Figma community. So um, it's definitely, I think, my number one tool uh, working as a UX designer that um, I use the most frequent. When it comes to like prototype, I don't uh, do prototyping in Figma very often. If I get to do those like very basic like uh, screen connections, like uh, basic prototypes, I use Figma. Uh, it's actually very straightforward. Um, there is a tab you will see in this quick demo. There is a prototype mode you can switch to and just a quick using the um, drag and job pointing arrows, you can quickly quickly like uh, creating um, a clickable, clickable prototype for demonstration. Um, the reason I say I don't use it very often is because uh, my current job role is uh, requires a lot of work related to video. So uh, I will share with you guys another tool that I use for creating actual prototypes, and it is just a way easier when it comes to dealing with videos. But overall, I think uh, you know, feel free to check it out uh, if you haven't used Figma in the past. It is definitely, I think, becoming if it is not already, it's definitely um, prob probably among the number one tool, um, most popular or common used uh, design tools comes to uh, working as UX designer. The next one I want to share is called Overflow. Uh, this one is probably not as well known as Figma. I'm not sure, but I heard this, I learned about it from um, a friend uh, who I used to work together. And it's really easy for creating diagrams and user flows. Uh, you can start for free, sign for a free trial. Uh, oh, it seems like it, you can also do some like screen mocks as well. But what I use it is really like creating flows. You know, when it comes to those like user flows, uh, or when you're trying to create information architecture of a new uh, product, this is really easy. It has tons of like modules. You can just drag very easily, drag and drop with the different shapes from like square, triangle, uh, diamond shapes, and you can easily set the color theme and use it as module and drag and drop connecting different uh, uh, diagrams and kind of or different screens um, very easily. So it's majority is for I use it for creating user flows. Um, please feel free to check it out more. I'm sure um, the website here uh, looks like there are like tour how it works and more features uh, in terms of uh, reach functions that you can do more with overflow. 
So the other one I want to share with you, uh, you guys is uh, called Principle. Uh, this one, I use it very often for prototyping. Uh, like I just mentioned, I work a lot with video assets and Principle is extremely easy uh, when it comes to dealing with video. Um, but in terms of actual prototyping process, it is actually quite different than other prototyping tools I used before. Uh, I used to use Envision, Marvel a lot. Uh, for creating basic or quick prototype demo. Uh, but principle, I think the learn, it takes a little bit of learning curve uh, because the process and how it handle prototype, the idea is a little bit different. But actually, once you dip your hand into it uh, and watch some like tutorial, I think it's really powerful in terms of uh, coming to animation. Um, so this is something, uh, you know, I would highly rec recommend if you are interested in uh, animation, prototyping, or working with videos, um, creating more reaching interactions. This is a pretty powerful tool to look at. Um, so the one drawback I have to, I wanted to point out is I believe, yeah, this is still on Mac only. So principle at the moment is a prototyping tool that supports Mac system only. And here, this is like a demo, I believe, like you can get an idea. Basically it is something, um, you can easily take drag and drop uh, or export a screen from Figma or Sketch and put it in principle. Once you have it there, you can create those uh, animations. And after you have those, like, for example, tap in this icon, go into the next screen. And those are basically those arrows are connecting different interactions and where you can use this panel to set up those details for interactions. Uh, where you can set up, say, is in, is out, uh, and setting up more like rich details in terms of how the transition should uh, look like. But overall, I think, uh, yeah, this takes a little bit learning curve, but there are, the good part is there are a lot of like, I think tutorials um, available on the website uh, in this section. So uh, it has a lot of videos talking about how to create, uh, use principle to in like create prototypes for scrolling, uh, and or creating things like uh, working with image and uh, so a lot of examples. Another tool I want to talk about is Notion. I use it in my past role, which is really I got to learn about this tool um, where back then uh, the company standard tool is using Jira. And I got to learn about Notion from a, a coworker who introduced this software. And it is so convenient, I think, in terms of like team collaboration, tracking progress of different tasks. So overall, this is something I think it's really easy for like, no matter you want to take a notes or document your pro progress or use it in a more advanced, like with multiple team member to track the progress all of your project. It is so handy. It has a lot of fun template emojis and ways to start like a uh, template. So uh, you can use it for different purpose. Um, and keep a lot of important information in progress with those labels and easily be able to track them and share. Basically, it's, a boy, uh, it's available for both iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, and uh, pricing, sh I, I believe it is pretty reasonable price and feel free to check it out more here. It looks like there are tons of examples. You can see there, like it says, notions for teams, enterprise, for remote work, personal use, startup students, educators. So I think it has like, you know, from different perspective, like I've used different note taking tools like Evernote or uh, Doc. Um, and this seems like I think the most advanced tool if you're looking to make your notes and docs more organized and also be able to track the progress of projects and uh, keep everything in one place. So last, uh, I just wanna to touch um, Sketch because this is something still I think uh, uh, a major software as a UX designer. It is something like I've used for years before transition to Figma. Uh, it's very sim it's very similar to some extent, but basically you can use Sketch to create uh, things from uh, icons, from wireframing to high fidelity uh, and also prototypes. So pretty much like uh, also a very like core tool as a UX designer. This is something like equal, kind of equal to Figma where you can use to really do most of the design works involved as UX designer. 
um, and uh, at the end want to touch on abstract. This is something uh, it's made for sketch files, I believe. Yes, true version control for sketch files. Um, so I got to use this uh, this tool abstract in my past job. It's uh, when we are building and launching a whole new design system for the design team. And uh, because the team back then we were using sketch and this really give us a way to manage all different versions of sketch files and share uh, the latest as we launch like different part of the design system working with Eng team um, and to launch those simultaneously. And I think this is uh, a great tool if you are looking for if you are working with Sketch and looking for ways to collaborate and sharing and also managing like version controls because sometimes it can get really complicated if you're trying to manually do the version control comes to Sketch. Like you might have like version 1.0, that's what I do. And the next one will be 1.1. If it is something like in a different criteria or a different type, I wouldn't change the first digit. You know, everyone has your own naming structures, but it can get really complicated working with different team members. Say I worked um, to a certain extent and I need to pass this work to my coworker. And how do you like make those collaborations simultan uh, seamlessly? And I think this is where abstract becomes like really uh, helpful because you are able to, uh, you know, create a branch, work on things um, par in parallel. And uh, once you have things final reviewed and you can like share with others um, and leave comment and just uh, use the red line, leave comments uh, right in abstract. And once um, things are reviewed and you are made a decision, you can like, uh, I think submit and merge. So it becomes like uh, get into the master. And so there are a lot of the terminologies uh, actually within abstract. For example, you'll see like here collections, master, branches, what are those? Uh, so it takes a little bit learning to understand the terminology and what's the meaning behind how you can use them to the best of your scenario. But overall, I think uh, my take is if you're using Sketch, uh, abstract is something that can be really helpful in terms of version controls and collaborations. When I come talk about collaboration, it's not only collaboration with your designer peers or design team, uh, but also like collaborate with uh, PM and Eng because this is a place you can like easily ask others to review and leave feedback uh, and you will get notifications. You can reply right in place. So um, yeah, good way for collaborations if you're using Sketch. Okay, so that's all I have for today. Just wanted to share a couple of tools that I use uh, as a UX designer in my everyday work. Um, so feel free to let me know your comments and if you know any other tools you'd like to recommend and you enjoy working using, please feel free to share it. I'd love to hear more from you guys. What are things that you really enjoy working with? And uh, I will see you guys next time. Thanks guys, bye.